Okay, where's your brain slug? Poor little guys starve to death. If you somehow haven't heard about this discourse yet, basically the War Thunder player base is not happy with Gaijin because they really fumbled the bag when it came to modeling the M1. It was pretty bad before, but it got even worse with the addition of the M1A2 SEP V2 in the most recent update. Basically, while Russia and Germany got tanks that added something new to the experience, the SEP V2 in War Thunder is basically just a SEP but heavier, and that's about it. It gets some more ERA tiles that don't really do all that much, and you can't remove them to save weight, unlike the SEP. Combine this with another premium M1, and US win rates are pretty terrible. I think my win rate in the SEP V2 is something like 30%, 22%, so yeah, it's pretty awful. Comparing my stats in the Leopard 2A7V versus the SEP V2 is kind of funny and depressing at the same time. I know I just made an M1 video, like, exactly a week ago, but a lot of people were asking me to make a video on this drama, and a lot of comments on that previous M1 video assumed that I was talking about the War Thunder drama anyway, without watching the video at all, so I thought I would get it out of the way, you know? Anyway, the main problem with the M1, at least in the community's eyes, is that the M1 doesn't have a DU hole array, DU being depleted uranium, and all of the M1 variants didn't get spall liners. Now, I've done a bit of research into both of these topics, looking for primary source documents. Now, it's important to note that there have been a ton of bug reports and posts made about these issues. It's not possible for me to see every single one, so I might have missed something, but I did a decent amount of research, so I don't think I missed anything. I could be wrong, but this is just my perspective on it. So, when it comes to the depleted uranium hull, the community made a giant bug report thread on it. People were linking a ton of different sources on it, some of them good, some of them not. And eventually, Gaijin made a dev blog talking about that issue specifically. And in it, they come to the conclusion that some M1s did have DU holes, just five of them, and that they were not used in service. They also said they don't know how much that armor would improve the hull protection of the M1, so they wouldn't be adding it. They also wouldn't be adding M829A3, because they didn't believe it'd be very effective. However, to try and rectify the M1's terrible win rate, they decided to buff the reload. Its ace reload is now 5 seconds flat instead of 6, which is a pretty big advantage. The community was pretty upset with this, and I honestly can't blame them. I feel like Gaijin handled it pretty poorly overall, and I'll explain why. So I don't totally disagree with Gaijin here. I've been trying to find a concrete primary source mention of M1's having DU holes prior to the SEP V3, which we know definitely has a DU hole, and I can't find anything. I know in the document that says only five holes have DU, someone linked an amendment from late 2006 and 2016. On both of those, I can't find any mention that they're removing the limit of five DU holes. And as far as an upgrade to a DU hole in 2006, that doesn't make a ton of sense. There weren't any major upgrades to the M1 in that time frame besides the M1A1SA, I believe, which shouldn't really affect the protection as far as I know, that was the Situational Awareness upgrade. And it's the M1A1 specifically, not the M1A2, so. Now as far as the 2016 amendment, that would make sense. That was around the time the set V3 was being made. But before you guys dislike the video, let me say, I don't think that means the M1 shouldn't get a DU hull. You know, there are plenty of tanks and planes in War Thunder that got things they never used, purely for balance reasons. Like the T-80B getting thermals is a great example. I mean, we've got vehicles like the 2S38 and Sprut SDM-1, which when they were added to War Thunder, they weren't even accepted for service yet. So I think Gaijin should have just given the M1A2 a DU hull, at least on the SEP V2. Because when you think about it, it's probably not going to affect gameplay all that much. Because most people are just going to shoot the turret ring anyway, which is a separate issue but it would make the player base happy. But you know, a DU hole would force people to aim a bit more carefully. Plus, the US was pretty much exclusively doing coin until recently, so upgrading the hole armor, which already resisted things like RPGs and ATGMs, didn't make much sense. There's always a trade-off, you know? Sure, you could upgrade the armor, but it's gonna add weight and cost, so is it really worth it in the end for what you're fighting? Especially when you consider that the army thinks the M1 is way overweight, which, yeah, probably. And I don't get this argument that they don't know how much the armor would be improved by it. Like, half of top tier isn't just guesswork. Gaijin, just make up a number. Who cares? You certainly feel fine making up numbers for other things. So yeah, overall, my opinion on the DU hole, it probably didn't have one before the SEP V3, but they should just give it anyway. Gaijin is never consistent on this issue of do we want historical accuracy or gameplay balance. It always flip-flops, you know? Now, as far as the spoil liner goes, I'm pretty confident on this topic. I'm sorry, guys, but I don't think the M1 has one. 
I know that much like with the DU hull, people are thinking that, you know, the US military is the largest in the world. They can afford to put a spall liner in their MBT, so why wouldn't they? But again, it's a little bit more complex than that. Kevlar is pretty heavy, and when you're covering the entire interior of a tank in it, that adds up. I think I saw a document that says that putting a Kevlar spall liner in the M1 would increase weight by something like 2 tons. Which again, the army, very weight conscious with the M1. Not a big fan of that, probably. I couldn't find any mention of a spall liner or shield on the M1 besides one single square that covers the hydraulics for the turret. And even then, it just looks like very thin steel, not even Kevlar. I did find this document from the mid-80s that talks about investigating putting a spall liner in the M1. To enhance survivability and increase the safety of the soldiers, a newly designed Kevlar ballistic liner for armored vehicles has been developed. Use of this liner in the M113 armor personnel carrier sharply reduces the chance of injury from high-velocity fragments, intense pressure, high temperatures, blinding light, and choking gas. Research is now proceeding at MTL to apply this technology to the M1 Abrams main battle tank in the M2 infantry fighting vehicle. So yeah, they definitely thought about it, but as far as actually using it, they didn't. You might remember Kawa, the guy I interviewed for the Striker MGS video. He was also a commander of an M1 Abrams, and he says that it does not have one. The inside is just bare metal. I saw some really weird claims from people saying, oh, that's not metal, it's actually a rubber lining that covers the Kevlar. Which is just, yeah. The only mention I could find for a rubber coating over a Kevlar liner on the M1 has to do with a very specific engine part. So yeah, I'm pretty confident that the M1 doesn't have a spall liner. Honestly, I think that spall liners are a bad idea for the game as a whole. Like, getting a good shot on an enemy tank and having the round do nothing is probably the most frustrating thing in this game. So making it a gameplay feature is not great in my eyes, especially when you consider that the tanks that can get it do not need it. Like, sure, you can make an argument for the T90M being easy to kill otherwise, but the STRV-122, Leopard 2A7, these tanks definitely don't need it. They're already the most difficult tanks to kill in the game. Or when you consider that most of the other vehicles that can get spall liners are light vehicles that don't spall anyway. The MGS is really funny because I believe it would have double spall liners. Like, it would have liners on the interior walls and over the ammo. So, good luck killing that. And the way that Gaijin is modeling these spall liners is so slapdash. You look inside the M3A3, pretty much the entire interior is covered in spall liners. But in the game, it's like three tiny pieces that don't do anything. They don't even have it on the turret, which definitely should have spall liners. Now, while the M1 doesn't have a spall liner, there are ways to improve its survivability because it does get one shot surprisingly easily. For one, they could actually model the turret basket. That would help a bit, I think. It's thin enough that I don't think it would create new spall, but it should stop the original spall. Someone also submitted a bug report which was accepted that would beef up the turret ring a bit. I don't think it'd really be stopping any APFS TS rounds or even heat rounds, probably, but maybe it would work against older AP rounds or autocannon APFS DS. And maybe it reduced spall a bit, who knows. One thing they've really got to fix is that shooting the top half of the upper front plate bounces the rod into the turret anyway, which should not be happening. Darts have really good penetration, but they don't handle ricochets very well. After bouncing off the upper front plate, it would look more like a boomerang than an actual rod. And you can imagine that this stress would impact its penetration and damage quite a bit. I know for a while the Abrams upper front plate actually did shatter rounds pretty consistently, but that was reverted, unfortunately. One thing they could do immediately that would be a gigantic help would be reducing the noise of the turbine. Because right now the turbine noise is basically an alarm. It's like, hey, I'm an Abrams, I'm 500 meters away, come shoot me. And it makes it difficult to hear other tanks. Just hearing that constant loud vacuum noise in your ear. And if Gaijin got really desperate, they could model the body armor and CVCs for the crewmen. Or they could fix that thing where if you're carrying heat rounds, your blowout panels don't work. Because yeah, that makes sense, right? I'm sure that the M1 was designed to only carry APFS DS rounds. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that adding a DU hull or a spall liner would help much in the first place. And I think there are plenty of other things you could do to make the M1 more competitive. When I saw the set V2 on the dev stream, I was really surprised they didn't give it trophy. V2s did get trophy in Europe. They're the M1s with the big counterweights on the turret front. It wouldn't help you against other MBTs unless they're firing gun-launched ATGMs, but... IFVs, helicopters, support vehicles. A hard kill active protection system would be pretty nice to have. And it would actually make the SEP V2 different from the SEP. I would prefer if they could add the one that doesn't have tusk armor on it, or at least give me an option to remove it if I don't want it. It's basically dead weight. And I saw people saying that Gaijin doesn't think M829A3 actually works. Like the anti-ERA tip doesn't do anything, but 
I don't think that's what they meant. I think they meant that it wouldn't do anything against Relict, which I don't think they're wrong in that respect. I don't think ME29A3 would go through that, probably. But that's kind of shallow thinking on their part. Not every game is a 12.7 game exclusively. Down tiers do exist. And plenty of people bring stuff like TADUs in their lineups, so it'd definitely be effective against that. It's a lot like the DU whole armor, right? It probably wouldn't change much, but it'd be nice to have. I really think that Gaijin should have just added the set V3. I know they want to do chronological order when it comes to adding MBTs, but the set V2 doesn't really add anything in War Thunder, you know? Like, what did it add in real life? It added crows, which would be great if every machine gun in the game weren't already remote controlled, except for the M18, obviously. It also added fire control upgrades, electronics upgrades, and refinements to the engine and transmission, but not refinements that would be reflected in the game. The crows is actually more of a detriment, because it's basically a giant, hey, I'm in defilade, come shoot me sign. At least with the V3, you get more hull and turret armor, and a more low-profile crows. At the end of the day, though, it doesn't really matter what they add to the M1. If US teams at top tier keep being so bad, they could add the CATTB, and it wouldn't make a difference. And that's kind of a two-fold issue, right? First, the US didn't get anything interesting, so experienced players have no reason to play US top tier, and Gaijin keeps flooding it with new premiums. So half your team could be level 10s that don't know how to play the game. The clickbait and the KVT really don't help. Like, everyone agrees that German mid tier is pretty bad for teammates too, right? Can you imagine if there were like three different premium Tigers? It would not be good. Not good at all. I wish they would add something besides M1s as well. Some new support vehicles would definitely be nice. Maybe something like the M10 Booker. But yeah, those are my quick thoughts on the recent M1 drama. Like I said, I don't have all the info, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure about the spall liner, but the DU hull is kinda iffy. I don't really play top tier anyway, so it doesn't have an effect on me, but I did try the set V2, and it was pretty bad. Both the tank and the teams. There are definitely worse MBTs in the game, especially for certain minor nations, but at least the players are good, you know? Anyway, if you guys have suggestions for video topics, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.